Hi, it's Damian from SkatingGirls.com. Today we will learn how to break using the T-stop or L-stop method. There are many methods many different instructors teach in their own specific ways. I have my own way. As one may often learn T-stop at the beginning, I personally find it as a quite difficult way to break, so you are learning about it just today. If you are new to my channel, I recommend you to go and search for my playlist. They're in the appropriate methodological order, in my opinion. In my opinion, I am Fais, you will learn how to skate. Today will be the T-stop. If you were rolling through of my videos in a sequence, T-stop won't be difficult for you. It really won't be that difficult. This is a very good way to break. It is also a controversial topic because everyone teaches a little differently. However, I worked out my own way and today you will find out about it, so I invite you to watch it. Ok, I'll throw you into the deep water first and uh, show you what T-stop breaking method looks like. In example, the popular T-stop, I also call it L-stop, let me explain why in a moment. See what it looks like. It is this kind of breaking. On one leg or the other leg. Voila! One leg strides forward, the other one behind it as if it is a plow. It pulls ballast behind it, thanks to which we break. A very nice way to stop or slow down. On the other hand, attention, it is not the most effective way to stop. There are more effective ways like power slide, power stop and a few more. However, this one is very good, for example for mass skating events. If you are skating, it's great to be able to t-stop very well. Then you really are able to control your speed quite well on the skates. Ok, let me show you how to do this. This secret, again, if anyone has seen my videos before, then they should know. What a surprise! The secret lies in our ability to position the weight on one leg. And that's the secret. Begin with this. Look, the legs are even, of course, proper position, three postures. If you did not know them before, I invite you to this video. Now I choose which of my legs will be weight net in the ratio of 80 to 20. Do this with me alongside. That is, stand up in this way and put one leg backwards and similarly the other leg backwards in this way. Do this little exercise several times and decide which side is more convenient to you. We will only study your dominant side at first. Someone has the dominant left side, the other may have the right side. Therefore, check yourself at first. Do this exercise several times in order to feel which side is your dominant. If you found your personal preference, start practicing. Today I will be only showing one side, I will show for example left side, which does no matter to me, but let's say that the left side will be clearly visible on the camera. If you are more comfortable with a different side, you do all this exercise the same way, only the opposite leg. Ok? Great. The first exercise will be, you already know it, if you have watched my videos before, for example, 7 tricks how to quickly improve your skills on inline skates, I recommend it. Very cool exercises, it is worth learning them, because you will need them for more advanced things. So called Toro. In example, I will roll. You should know that already I put my leg backwards, I put it on a wheel, the hill is covered to the end. And now here, see? My knee should be covering and even slightly overlapping over the toes. Like this, see it goes slightly beyond the toes. It is difficult to keep it on uneven terrain and motionless, but you should try it because you will be doing it while skating in a moment. If you've done these exercises before, it won't be a problem, I'll show you quickly. Only for those who haven't seen it yet. From the front it looks like this. Voila! This is how it looks like from the side. That's it.
It's called a T-stop because I make the letter T with my feet while braking. On the other hand, one of the most common mistakes is when a beginner does an inverted L. If I place my leg too far over here, which is wrong, we are thrown out of our position. You don't want to break this way. However, we can definitely break in the following way, so called L stop. Many instructors teach T stops only, while L stop can prove to be more comfortable. T stop is sure fun to learn. If you master the T stop, L stop will feel like a natural step as it will be easier for you then. You will experience a cool down effect. In example, a step down from a higher level to a lower one and you will master it in no time. In my classes, I often use this method where I begin with these difficult exercises. But when we suddenly drop to a lower level, we feel like we are able to perform better in comparison to the more difficult challenge. Hence, this is a wrong way. This is okay. That is also okay. I prefer this way and this is the mentioned cooldown effect. Alright. Look at this, warrior position, letter T, put more weight, 80 to 20 on that leg, and now I'm going forward, watch my knee going forward hard, my head over that leg as well, and back. Look, it, I lost that here, I will try to show you again. I go sharply forward, my knee covers the toes, my head too, and I come back. When you come back, you can have 50-50 weight balance. However, when I leave here, 80% of my body weight goes forward and go back. That's the warrior position. Try doing both sides, but if one of them seems to be very challenging for you, you only do it on your dominant side, okay? Another one a zombie. This one is almost the same as the warrior. In example, I go forward 80-20, and drag my leg behind me. Look. Push and drag. Push and drag. Zombie is a nice exercise. It helps with the learning process. This is, however, just an auxiliary exercise. It will not do the breaking for you, but it helps you to master it. In these exercises, the most difficult thing is, as you can see, it didn't go for me perfectly as well, I have lots of experience, however, some things still require my full effort. I haven't mastered everything to perfection. The biggest problem here is to hold the weight on one leg, 80-20%. If you don't know how to balance this ratio, then make it more on one leg, 90 to 10, do not make it less, one leg should take more weight than the other. Alright, let's move on. If you did the toe roll, in example, a wheel behind and the weight on the leg in the front, warrior and zombie, then we go to the next exercise, which looks like an inverted zombie. It looks almost identical, but the effort is balanced in a different way, because now I do not jump forward, as we did before with the warrior and I don't track my leg. Instead my back foot has the weight now. I push with it and try to slide. I'll show it again. I push off with this leg, shift the weight right here on this leg and lift this leg behind, pulling it just like a zombie, drag or pull, whichever you prefer. Your goal is to achieve nice smooth glide, so that the hinder leg remains behind. Do not make this mistake, which is common, I've mentioned it before, it can be L or T stop, but it can't be like this. All the wheels should be flat on the ground. Your job is to do it like this, until the full stop. It has to be a nice gentle glide on a really low speed. If you end up doing it like this, 
It is difficult for me to simulate this, but if you feel this tearing motion, which happens often with the beginners, it means you've put too much weight. The key here is to revise the 80 front and 20 back position. If the hindle leg is considerably relieved, this slide will be really smooth. You will see it for yourself. Put a lot of weight on the front leg, the back leg is completely relieved, then try gently to increase your speed. Don't start with a dazzling speed right away if you feel like struggling with this. Start slowly and gently increase your speed. Don't rush it. If you have gotten to this point so far and you start sliding like this, doing almost a 2 meter long slide, you will probably have a problem to deal with. The problem we most probably relate to, not probably but surely, a rotational force. There's a secret to keep you from rotating too much, but let me first show you the most common mistakes. The most common mistakes. Number one, the one I showed you before, inverted L braking. I began rotating instantly, can't do that. Do not place your leg to the inverted L position. It can be T or L letter, ok, but can't be here. The other very common mistake is too much weight back here, which creates steering motion. There won't be a smooth slide and you will start steering the ground. It means you need more weight on your front leg. You have too much weight in the back, which generates the tearing and the slide isn't smooth. And the most prevailing mistake, the rotation. How to counter it? Quite simple. If you have a breaking leg behind you, in this case right leg, put your right hand forward. If it's left slide, then likewise left hand forward. The extended arm will counter the rotation. Try it yourself, it helps a lot. It does not eliminate the rotation completely, because you have to hold the weight on the front leg. However, it helps a lot and makes it easier. I encourage you to try this technique when breaking with a T-step method. If you still find T-step to be challenging, it means that you have a problem with putting the weight on one leg. What's the solution for this? The exercise you should know already. Toe rolling. I lift it, put it down. Lift and down, lift and down. By lifting that wheel on your back leg, you naturally position 100 or 90% of the weight on one leg only. That's the gist. You have to grasp these solid basics. T-stop is very necessary, it is not the easiest way to break. It is very effective to slow down or stop in a reasonably short braking length, but you need it more than you think. I use the T-stop very often, especially during skating events where there are a lot of people and you need to slow down somehow, there is no room for turns, I don't want to stop right away with a power slide, I do a T-stop to brake nicely. A very important braking method. If you stand on this leg straight and put weight here, the balance will cut you down. It will overturn you or cut you. You will fall if you have your weight back here. But if the weight is in the front, your back leg will align automatically. However, if you stand straight on back leg while skating, a fall is guaranteed. Alright. One last thing. While learning the T-stop we have these auxiliary exercises. One of them is toe roll and place the foot flat.
Right hand forward will help in case you rotate. Now I will try to show it. I have some experience in this, so I don't have to use my hand because I can hold the balance nicely. Just like this. Now from the side. So I do the toe roll, my hand forward, then place my foot flat and look. I naturally do L-stop, and there's nothing wrong with it. Don't concentrate on the T letter just for the sake of it. Both T and L are fine, but the inverted L is wrong. Alright, time to summarize it all. First of all, find your own dominant side. Stand on your left leg or on your right leg several times to find your dominant side. Then focus on it. When you feel like you've mastered T-stop exercises and T-stop breaking on your dominant side, start doing the same on the other side because it is good to be able to do it on both sides. The other sides should be practiced in the very same way you did with your dominant side. Next thing. Toe rope. Skating with your weight balanced as 80-20 or even 90-10. Your back leg is relied on your toes, your front wheel only. The heel must be covered, not like this. Hopefully, you can see it, I do not skate this way, I cover my heel. It has to be covered. You can learn more about it in this video, where I show and discuss it in detail. Next thing. Warrior, I push 80, 20 and I come back, push and return, ok? Next one, zombie, the warrior but I pull my leg behind, the warrior but I pull my leg behind. Next one, an inverted zombie, I push off with the back leg here, now I actually have more weight here, because I have to push myself away, no weight here but I shift the weight forward very quickly, lean over that leg, bend my knee a lot, and I'm trying to make a gentle slide. It has to be done slowly and gently, we'll end up with this smooth motion, just like this. I'm trying to do it one by one continuously. Look, I'll show from the front. Like this. Push harder. Use your hand to help yourself. Esta. Push. Keeping the balance. Next. While skating, you do the toe roll and you try to get your foot flat to the T-stop or L-stop position. Use whichever you prefer. It does not have to be a perfect position, but focus on keeping the weight and balance. T-step is fun. At higher speeds, of course, it is easier. Whatever speed helps, because when standing in one place, it is more difficult. Voila, a full stop. Okay, that's it. Again, a long video, but the T-stop is very important. A lot of people try to learn it in odd ways. If you watch this video and try to do it methodically along with me, you will definitely succeed. If you failed, it means that you have to go back and watch my previous videos and learn the basics there, allowing you to master the T-stop. Thank you for making it this far, for listening to my blubbering. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. That way you won't miss my new videos. Don't hesitate to comment below if you want to ask about something specific. I always try to answer your all comments. It is important for me to know your expectations and your interests. I then try to film and discuss topics that are interesting for you. Thank you, see you in the next video, bye!